So kind of a, a nice peaceful way to get started in the morning. You know, the, the simple way we just kind of had you guys bump a little shots down here. Not a tremendous amount of ball flight expectation, more focused on can a body go from, you know, for, facing the golf ball, rotating toward a target, maybe arriving in balance up on a trail toe. The one little nice visual is to, you know, get ready to hit one. and then roll a golf ball when you're when you kind of get in a nice spot you know take that golf ball and kind of push it up against your side of your foot so when you bump the golf ball and you go to this finishing form you know did I roll it at all or spin out or not get my pressure offset nicely onto my lead side okay again that offsets easier if you're you know if this foot is turned out and it's easier for you your knee to travel forward okay so as i was scanning the group i saw a nice nice job there you guys are like most camps there's opportunity in the grip okay you, everybody wants to hit it farther the tour pros the top amateurs have the best grips coach garrett's grips fantastic mike's jim's mine why pain in the arse coaches that you know are sticklers about position because you have an opportunity for leverage when you and I did this with a couple of you guys with Dan and who did I just do it with I do it with Dave yeah so there's a vertical golf shaft guys and we talked about this at breakfast I'm just gonna get this on on a video for you that if I grip this in this manner I can still cheat it a bit and some of you try to you try to cheat it by kind of getting the club kind of where you want it anyway. Students are fascinating. We know, we, we think we got the best drill for you ever, and then you guys work around it trying to do what's comfortable back to you, which is fine. It's just not gonna be your, you know, that's not you challenging yourself to the level to where you could really get your best. So this is, a, again, a grip that's across my forearm. It's not along my forearm. So this would be across my hand rather than along my hand. And so Bill's very good question this morning at breakfast, there's a very good leverage position. And when you see this, you go, okay, this is me at P3. Now in golf, you know, there's a vertical shaft. There's me rotated. Now, what do you notice about where my left shoulder is going and where the shaft's pitching? It's pitching more where a golf ball would be in front of me, isn't it? Okay, but I've got... A leverage opportunity there that's really important because when I go the other way it can have some it has a, the most room for my physicality to expand on a golf ball whereas many of you tend to you know grip it for comfort rather than that function because this feels man that feels good at address face is aiming at the target that's great but then I can't I can't have that same range of motion in there and I lose every percent there every degree is valuable speed Okay, and that's why we're such sticklers about putting your hands on nicely. It's super important. Okay, so what I wanted to do was kind of explain to you. I posted this on my Instagram yesterday. Dave doesn't know this, but he's featured. He did, you know, we were doing this work with this weight stack. And I talked to you about it this, this morning on how this weight stack's held up by this rubber band. And there's this little dampener device here. And this is going to slide down and bang into the dampener. So I could do the same kind of leveraging stuff, unhinge it a little bit, tip it down to the ground as I bend into my forward flex. And you can clearly hear that weight stack pop down into the, okay, into the dampener. Now, why does it pop down into the dampener? Because it's got an opposition. You know, I, I was joking in my Instagram post, if you gave two six-year-olds a rope, and you had them stand back to back and they're each holding this piece of 20 foot rope and you said go and one ran that way and one ran that way it wouldn't take too many steps before the rope would get is comfortably opposed and taut at a moment it might be fun to watch actually assuming they don't hurt themselves right but it would be taut so watch how expansion eventually gets taut so as i create the opportunity for expansion here's these kids running away from each other Okay, this one 
is its maximum behind me, up and behind me. This one got all the way down here. And so those, that's the sense of opposition. Now if I was to, if this kid and this kid, if this kid runs toward that one, I can never make it oppose each other. But as I, as I understand opposition after the opportunity of good leverage, now I can have some power down there. Okay, so I want you guys to have the most power you have for your physicality. Should feel generally easy to get. Really should. Should feel easy. Okay, and it's all based on good hands that can create leverage. Okay, so with a couple of you, I saw some pretty cool things. But some of you are stuck in your own habit, in your own pattern. Because you've been on that pattern for quite a long time. Okay, so to kind of understand, all right. And this was interesting with the ladies. I put that black tube on your arm. Did you find that interesting using that tube? Yeah. Right, because you can't really bend your arm. So if, you, if we take away one range of motion here, now guess what? It makes another range of motion activate and take over. I could do this and have a range of motion. Or if this doesn't bend anymore, guess what? It acts as a piston to help push me out of the way a little bit. So that's, that was that little lesson there for you guys, right? So, okay. You know, people call it a stiff, straight left arm. You know, I just call it an awareness. And when an arm is straight, you know, a tricep is what straightens it. These little muscles straighten your arm. So, you, I mean, you could activate, you know, you could activate those triceps. You know, and it couldn't be more rotated, buns tucked, agreed? Okay, because straight left arm helps turn me but if I was to try to <clears throat> bend it you know which is something you don't want to feel negative reinforcement you're gonna rotate but if it's if you don't have that opportunity to learn you may be able to do this stay down and see what we see it every week I'm glad it's not contagious okay so cool little warm-up sesh for you guys I thought okay I thought everybody was in a good like learning space um, it was neat with Courtney. Courtney, you know, Jim was explaining how a circle approaches a golf ball. And, you know, we could do it a couple simple ways. Do me a favor. Grab my T-square out of that bag for me, Coach. Awesome. You know, so I could say to you, you know, here's a dimension. Here's a dimension. So the ball's sort of in the middle of that, okay? Or maybe I tap one of these sticks, that's not the intent, but here's my leverage created. Here's it's mildly undone. Here's me tipping over to a golf ball, tap, 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 waggle, waggle, waggle. And so a ball gets tapped down range, I'm in my finishing form. And this ball's centered between these two sticks that are, I don't know, 16 inches apart, 18 inches apart. Just somewhere I can stand comfortably in the middle of this. Now, so what do you notice on the way back? This club's working back up and in a little bit with an opportunity for leverage. It works down to tap the ball, but does it stay down and hit this stick in front of me? It doesn't. You know, tapped at that time. But here's what I see with a ton of students, this behavior. And this is the scourge. This is the plague. That move. Okay. So this little, this is like a plane getting called off landing. Okay. It's a plane getting called off landing. You know, the tower says, you know, Southwest flight 2117, you can land. And the pilot's coming down going, oh, yippee. And he says, oh, shit, mayday. So could I hit it any more crisply than that? I don't think so. And so do you see how this circle is working down, touching? What gets it back up out of the ground, guys? Watch. Or I could do this. 
Which one looks more golf-like? You know it, extension and rotation. So here's a club that's on its way to a landing. I had a wonderful guy last, last week coaching him up, and this was his spastic shot every single time. And he was a 10 handicap, but he couldn't hit it 20 yards, but he could hit it 220, and he could hit it 160, and he could hit it 100. But he couldn't learn how to go touchdown, stand up. Touchdown, stand up. And here's the interesting thing. Dave, you be my helper here, pal. Cool, Dave, I just need you to stand right here and face the group. Say hello, group. Hello, group. Right here, buddy. Good. So when I stand in here and I hit a shot, you didn't flinch. Beautiful. Okay. Now here's the thing. I would never stand there if Dave was swinging. I wouldn't, because he's what we call, or I call, an over-accelerator, okay? He pours on the gas right here. Wow! He would have broke my arm, not intentionally, just from a pattern behavior, okay? And I've done this with, thousands, I don't know, hundreds of students now. Okay, he didn't flinch at all. So I was able to hit a shot pretty crisply pretty far with this expansion. And the pivot is what can kind of moderate and slow down the expansion of this golf club to where it doesn't ding you, mm -hmm. okay? So, you know, but if we stay flat-footed and hit it, there's a, there's a crazy acceleration that we don't need. The ball's been hit anyway, right? The ball's got its message. Finishes are just slowing down in style nicely, okay? So it's like, and, that, and Bill, this comes to you, you know? It's like learning how to... Let the, let the energy get onto a ball and then pivot your way into peace, not accelerate your way into tapping the club on your back. You know what I mean, buddy? So, like, if, if you stood there, like, again, if Bill stood there and he had a lightsaber, half of David's torso would flop on the ground Star Wars style, okay? And he would zzz, and he would be there, he would still talking to me, looking at me like, I want my money back from golf camp. But as I hit this little shot... I can hit it and know full well how to pace and face that event, mm -hmm. right? And so, guys, thank you, pal. This was, uh, this was great. Go have a seat for a sec. You know, learning how to kind of create leverage, let leverage develop, let it expand and pivot it to slow it down rather than stay down and accelerates kind of uncomfortably. You with me? Okay. So guys, we have three hours, almost three hours to lunch. We're gonna, we're gonna do some, Garrett's gonna kind of walk you through short game hierarchy, which is basically, you know, what shot to choose for the best odds of success. Okay, he's gonna walk you through that, we'll do, and then we'll cycle through that. Jim and Mike are gonna talk about driver delivery and the best setup positions, and a lot of it's still walk-in routine for that kind of stuff. You guys good with that, you two dudes? driver delivery, okay? I'm gonna continue on with sort of what we're doing here at different speeds, because it's the same thing, man, right? And so, you know, this golf club, like just kind of finish this little, this demo on expansion. You know, if I take this, I did it with Dave yesterday. Okay, so that's, that's this angle expanding to a comfortable radius that matches up reasonable ball turf and can slow down pretty nicely too, agreed? Tommy Fleetwood, great English player, British guy. Every swing, he, every shot he hits, he kind of just kind of puts on the brakes right here. Every shot. The driver goes a little farther and he rebounds and he holsters, okay? But he doesn't hit any iron really that goes whacking him in the back. And most players... You know, once the ball's gone, they're, they're kind of governing the slowdown behavior of how the club rehinges and how the elbows rehinge, which is the slowdown mechanism of a finishing form. All this energy goes, whew, and gets heavy here. 
It's the heavy part. The ball's hit. And then the rest of it is just kind of slowing down in style, guys. Okay, we don't have to try to force speed past impact. It expands onto a golf ball. Golf ball gets hit. Okay. Um, friend of mine, Steve Erickson, made this gizmo in his workshop. It's great because it just kind of separates the hands a little bit. And I was going to, when Dave come, when Dave's running through this station, others, I think I have two of the one's got an orange handle. This little behavior, everybody wants to kind of go right and left with the hands when the right and left behaviors are more body. And the hands job, the hand is more of an up and down condition. But it's, you know, we see hands as an event that goes this way rather than this way. So we can realize that when I, that it's complex to start looking at rotation and hands angling, creating leverage and how they work heavy at the bottom and slow down in style on their way back up. Heavy and then they slow down with our pivot. And so you start to see that. And maybe this dual aim stick thing is good for a lot of you to kind of realize, okay, here's some up and downs of the hands gets heavy and slows down with my pivot rather than something that is this way slappy left and right okay cool so I'll tell you what um, Garrett I'm gonna take your group so your group from yesterday will start with me on turf strikes down that end okay uh, Mike your group will stay here and start with driver okay Jim's group we'll break off and go with Garrett because Garrett's going to take you guys over to the short game area. Sound good? Question, Bill. Okay, so, so I mean, the hinge is in position three. Okay, now what is that position number when you're following through and it's, it's like a, an L? Nine. Okay, so that's what I'm struggling with. It, 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 it's it's that the three position and Nine position. So yeah, so here's here's the thing. You know, at address position one, the club is basically unhinged with a good grip. You'll feel this stretch of this these muscles in your forearm to get the club. For many of you that haven't gripped it properly, there's never been stress in your forearm here. If you grip it better and you uncock, you'll feel it pull down this muscle. I know what it's called, okay? So hinge, there's degrees of hinge all the way to P3 pal. There's degrees of it, okay? And I can't tell you specifically and exactly what they are, okay? But at address, there, you know, the club is unhinged. As we take it back, there's degrees of hinge until a sort of maximum hinge is when we get to P3. This event expands down, touches the ball as we create some opposition. And then there's elements of complete rehinge at P9. That's rehinge. And then from here, what's the rest of it? The elbows start to fold to help us slow down in style. Okay. So do you have a video on one through nine? I do, and it's already in and one through ten is already in your okay. loaded in your deal. That's, okay. that's in a template that everybody gets. Neat. I shot it a couple years ago. It's in my studio. It's pretty thorough, Great. and it's got a face-on angle and a down-the-line angle to help you understand it. Great. Okay. Cool. So you.